It's Friday, we made it through the week. Amen. <laughs> Guys, that song really touches me right now because whoo, what a week. Friends, welcome. Alita here. Welcome to anyone that's new. I have a word to share with you guys today. Um, it's based on a dream that I had on October 27th this year. <laughs> so a few days ago. Two days ago. Um, yeah, so before I get into it, guys, as always, please remember that not every prophetic word is meant for everyone. Although this one... This one feels like it's for most people. It actually almost feels like it's for everyone. But of course, please take it before the Lord. If God is speaking to you about this right now in the season, let him confirm it for you. And for some of you, this is confirmation that some, about something that God has already been speaking to you about. I still encourage you to take it before him. I really believe he wants to do some work in us um, based on the word that I have, that he has for us today. <laughs> it's not my word. <laughs> So um, yeah, we're going to dive straight into it. So I'll share the dream. Like I said, I had it on October 27th. And in this dream, I was standing in a bank. It was, I liked the bank. It felt so fresh and just, it, it was a nice place. And I was in the queue and the queue was moving really quickly. I was really excited to just get my turn to do whatever transaction I needed to do. Um, which I believe involved um, cashing some money or getting money and at some point the queue stopped moving quickly there were about two people in front of me and it just stopped moving quickly and uh, we were all getting impatient like what's going on and then someone came up to me dressed in the bank's uniform um, to come and help me and so it was almost like she was bringing the services of the tellers directly to me and she offered help and she was like no don't worry I'll do the transaction for you and we did it and I was left with half the money like it I was left at a deficit at this point <laughs> and that was pretty much the dream oh not a nice ending <laughs> but God has such a beautiful message for us through this dream guys um, this word is about insecurity at first I thought it was about impatience but that's a sub theme um, the whole scene at the bank talks about um, things that are certain right things that are sure when your money is in the bank you know it's in the bank it's certain and sure and you can go and get it when you need to go and get it so God is showing us that our promises everything that he has promised us is certain it is for sure. You are going to get it. Just trust Him through this process. Okay? Even though it may seem like things are taking long, you have to trust His timing. You will get what you, um, what God has promised you in His perfect timing. Because this is what happens when we're not trusting God. We begin to look for other ways to do things. Um, and specifically the stream even though i wasn't looking for it specifically what god is showing us in the stream is that the enemy is going to present an opportunity for you if you are impatient he's going to present an opportunity that will seem like a good opportunity okay this person was dressed in the right attire and i thought i could trust them instead of doing it the right way never have i ever been in a bank where the queue was long or things were taking long has anyone ever come up to me to do the transaction that just doesn't happen right so already that was off so the Lord is saying watch out for, for an opportunity that may come up while you are waiting for that promise and you think this is from God you think God is bringing you a different avenue or is opening up a different door for you to get to your promise watch out for what's off about it ask yourself if that is how it should be and pray obviously ask God for direction because the enemy is going to take advantage of the fact that you're impatient and that you are insecure and why I say this word is about insecurity is that when we are firmly rooted in Christ when we are secure in our identity 
in the Lord and we know who we are and we know who He is, we will be able to wait on what God has promised. How many instances in the Bible have we seen where people decided to take matters into their own hands because they just didn't trust God? Abraham, Abraham, <laughs> for example, and Sarah, they decided to take matters into their own hands and that was not God's way. It was not His plan and God did not jump on board with their plan. God had the perfect plan for them. So God has the perfect plan for you. Yes, sometimes things seem so frustrating and it's taking long. But from what I've been learning in these recent weeks that have been so refining, like I have been in the fire, right? What I've been learning is that there are certain things that we carry, that we are holding on to, that are so deeply rooted in us that the Lord is burning off of us with His consuming fire. So pay attention to what God is doing in you right now. Because if you're feeling impatient, if you're feeling like, I need to help God, I need to do things my own way, there is something that you need to, to deal with. There's some spirit that you need to deal with. For example, I had to deal with a spirit of rejection and an orphan spirit because... <laughs> I will share my testimony at the right time, guys. But those are the two spirits I've had to deal with recently. And it was so liberating. It was so liberating. So that's what God highlighted to me. What's God highlighting to you? Why are you feeling insecure? Allow God to speak to you about that. I'll just give you an example with the rejection spirit. I always would say to people, oh yeah, rejection is my biggest issue. Like I, uh, when I see rejection coming, I, you know, I run away or whatever, like it's my biggest issue. So looking back on my life, looking back on the choices I've made, it was all to preserve myself, to make sure that I don't get hurt, to make sure that I don't get rejected. And when it did happen, Guys, I know people call me dramatic sometimes. It's just my personality. But it was dramatic. When it happened, it was dramatic. I felt like I was dying because of that spirit that just has been a part of me. And I accepted it and I walked with it. And I said, this is, this is my issue. I, I have issues with rejection. I put that thing on and I zipped it up and I put... The hoodie over it, like that was what I was carrying. What are you carrying? There's something that the Lord said. I want to read it word for word, um, which is really, really beautiful. Um, just know that your promises are guaranteed, guys. They are guaranteed. Trust God. Go through the process that you need to go through. I was standing in a queue in the dream. That's a process. It's a process to get to the promises. So this is what the Lord had me write. And this is him speaking to us. He says, if they can just understand who I am, the real me, their Abba Father, they would be secure in me. They'd be willing to wait on what I have promised them. They won't feel any lack because the void will be filled. They can stand in line and be content knowing that I am good, knowing that they are secure. This just blessed my heart so much. Guys, I don't think we have a right concept, a right understanding of who God is, of how much He loves us. You don't need to make things happen for yourself. Trying to make things happen for yourself shows some kind of insecurity, some kind of issue, some underlying issue. When you release these things to the Lord with an understanding of who He is, you will be able to live each day fulfilled despite the circumstances knowing that God is good that he actually loves me he really cares for me I belong with him I'm a part of his family when we are secure in him when our identity is secure in him we won't be trying to make things happen we'll let God do what he's doing the biggest issue guys is that we don't know Him. We have an understanding of God that was passed down to us, whether it was by our pastors, 
our parents, church folk, we do not have an understanding of who God is. Very often we think we're always um, in trouble with Him. For some people, I'm not saying everyone that's the case. <laughs> but God is love. He is love. He is love. Meditate on that. Just sit on that scripture and ask God to reveal what that actually means. God is love. Jesus said, "When if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus was so full of compassion, so full of love for people. He came to bring healing, not just from physical wounds, but from the inner wounds. He came to bring acceptance. Think of the woman at the well. I'm sure in her society, she was an outcast. She must have felt like she was on the outside all the time. But Jesus pulled her back into the love of the Father. He said, you are accepted. You are perfect. You belong. You do belong. You're on the inside. You're part of God's family. He's adopted you. He loves you. Ask God to reveal His love. Ask God to reveal who He truly is to you. I wrote here, when you truly understand that Abba loves you completely, when you truly understand that even before He created the world, He loved us and He chose us. Even before He created the world, He loved us and He chose us. He loved you and He chose you before He created the world. Why are you rejecting yourself? When you truly understand that He purchased our freedom with the blood of Jesus, Yeshua, you will understand just how kind and loving He is. He purchased us. Someone had to die because that's how much He loved us. God is for you. He's not against you. He is for you. He's not against you. He is for you. He's not against you. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, He is for you. He's not against you. He's not like us who so easily get offended, who so easily can shut people out because they hurt me. They didn't love me the way that I needed to be loved, so I'm just going to shut them out. He's not like that. He's not like us. He's always loving us. Even when we're in the depths of sin, living a sinful life, He still loves us. You are His child. You are His child. There's no need to doubt that. Because when we're in doubt of that, that's when we begin to make things happen for ourselves. Or try and make things happen for ourselves because we're so insecure. We want to self-preserve. We want to make sure that nothing can come that would hurt us. We want to protect ourselves. You are protected. You are already protected. You don't have to do that for yourself. You are provided for. You don't have to worry about that. This is the time to work on being secure in Him and to be sure of your identity in Him. A lot of you are standing in that line waiting for your promises, asking God, when is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? You cannot walk into that promise unless you are firmly secure in Him, unless you fully understand your identity, and unless you fully understand that you are loved, that you belong, that you are a child of God. That everything they said, all those people since childhood, all those negative things that were said about you, that were spoken over you, are not true. You need to start cancelling those things. You need to start doing warfare against those words that were spoken over you. You need to start taking back what was stolen from you. You do belong to the heavenly family. Romans 8, 14 verse 17 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. 
I love that. All of this trying to make things happen for ourselves, grabbing an, an opportunity that isn't of the Lord, that is off, is about being fearful. You're just afraid that you're not going to get I'm not going to get it. So how can I make it happen that I get it? I've fallen for that trap. God had to reveal all of that to me in these past few weeks. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. I love that. Mm, excuse me, guys. There's things happening in my throat. Now we call him Abba Father. When I read that yesterday, it clicked for the first time. I've read the scripture before so many times. But for the first time, it clicked. It was like understanding that I'm fully accepted. Coming to the realization that I belong, that I am loved. When I read that, ah, oh, but Father, I was like, yes, that's who you are to me. That's who he is to you. For his spirit, I love this part, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Do you understand that your spirit is joined with God's spirit? You are joined with the most powerful, powerful spirit in the world, in all of creation. Why would you think so little of yourself? You are his child. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. I love that. We have an inheritance. You have an inheritance. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Friends, in this world that we live in, there will always be suffering. There will always be trials and tribulations. It's just the way it is. But through those sufferings, through those trials and tribulations, when you go through them knowing who you are, knowing that I am secure, I know who I am, I know whose I am, I know how much He loves me. And then you start to look at those trials as lessons. You begin to say, okay, what are we going to learn this time? What are you showing me? What do you need to get out of me? What needs to be burnt out of me this time? You begin to see things in a different light because he loves you. So friends, that's the word for today. I really pray that it's blessed you. Um, I'm so grateful to all of you for just the encouragement, guys. I've been through a very rough season lately. It's been intense, but also so good. So, so good at the same time. And I've just received so, so much encouragement for you guys, from you all. And I'm so grateful for that. I just wanted to say thank you. And just thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Friends, I'll see you in the next video. Always remember that God is a good father. He's so good. He's so good. He is so, so good. Because you are so special to him. I know I always say that at the end of my videos. But you really are. And he really is. So receive that and believe that. Meditate on it. Let God reveal that to you. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. The ball and chain.